Sonoma snow, one of four. Eight inches of snow accumulates in this Sonoma County hillside vineyard on February 23rd, 2023 in a rare snowfall. 204, tree limbs broke and unaccustomed to the weight of the heavy wet snow. 304, by following afternoon snow was receding. This is an excellent sequel, sorry. 404, by February 26th, the snow has all but melted. Yeah, this is an excellent sequence. You've got good, very perspectives. You have, of course, these this linear view of the, of, the, of the vineyards, which is always it's always interesting in our eyes. I don't know. I don't know what it is about. I, I guess it's the whole repet. So the, the, our eyes like repetition, and they also like to look for differences. So maybe that's that's what it is. But they're always very interesting, and, and you have different perspectives on them based upon the the weather. Um, uh, I wondered, you know, the thing I wondered is like, wow, I wonder, would, does this snow damage these vines or are they already dormant for this, for the February? Um, that was the only piece of information that I, that I was wondering. I'm not sure if that's even fair to say that to the, because there's a lot of good information here. Um, but that was the only thing I was kind of left with. I was wondering if like, wow, did these die? Because if they died, that would be a, well, if they died or if they lived, that would be part of the story, right? Because you can imagine if they, either way, you're, you have a, you know, a, Kind of a human experience there, yeah, but uh, well done, well done. Next, please. Okay, we'll take a uh, five-minute break, and then come back and start with uh, pictorial. Okay. Pictorial, and then uh, the non-compete category as well. So. Basic five images. Let's put my cursor in the right place. Ah. Portrait in the Wild, Marcella. Mark, you're muted. Thank you. You might regret that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> This is beautifully done. But, you know, the photographer captured the power and majesty of these animals. It's just uh, beautiful, totally beautiful. And, uh, you know, it's evocative. You, how can you help not but relate to these animals? Um, there's a, it's an emotional connection. Uh, now, the title was a bit confusing. So, Portrait in the Wild, Marcella. So, was this, it looks like a studio shot, but I mean, if it was done in the wild, that's, wow, that's some picture because. You know, this looks like it would have been nighttime with lights and stuff like that. And then Marcella sounds like a name of an animal. So it could be in a zoo or it could be one, maybe no, one that's out in the wild that's, that's uh, being observed. So, you know, the titles, uh, titles provide context and guidance. They can help or hinder. In this case, I'm not sure if, I think it actually kind of hindered a little bit because here I am talking about the title, right? Think about that. And I, you know, maybe I should be out a little more fortitude and not you know, be able to get over it, but it somewhat distracts from the beauty of the image because the image is well composed, very well composed. Um, next, please. Roses and shadows. Yeah, yeah this is excellent execution. Um, this is a person who knows how to shoot flowers and that can be very challenging to make them interesting because you see a lot of flower pictures, right? Um, you know, the shadows are good. The offset is nice because it captures the shadow of the plant. Um, it makes it, it's, it's a common image that's actually, I, I find very interesting. Uh, the depth of field is excellent, provides good bokeh for the background. It, it's a simple image made more successful by, by excellent execution. And I'm going to say thank you for not saturating. It's, I don't know what it was, it's like, I'm on Flickr and man, people put that meter up to 11, geez, on the saturation. And nature does not need our saturation. And uh, it looks like this person did not oversaturate this. So very well done. Next, please. Dusk Santa Cruz. Yeah, this is well done. The white border is kind of a nice touch. Uh, if you if you if the white border wasn't there, I think it'd be a different experience. But the white border is a nice little offset. And uh, um, the image appears a little bit tilted. You note the note the roof line. I'm not sure if that's just, you know, 
Actually, more I think about it now, maybe it is okay the way it is. Maybe it's just an optical effect with the way the land is formed and so forth. So I don't. I think I would straighten a little bit to the left. I think, um, but as I say that, I'm willing to admit that I'm that I'm that maybe I'm the only person who's had that experience. But it's it's well done. You know, this kind of remind me of of, of um, uh, Edward Hopper. I hope I'm saying that right. Some people say Hooper. I, I say Hopper. I'm willing to be corrected there too. Maybe it is Hooper. It's H-O-O-P-E-R, so it's probably Hooper. Um, but anyways, it kind of reminded me of that. And it has that kind of, uh, I don't know, that, that lone light there and this lone, build, this lone building with someone's obviously in there on late at night. So it's actually very successful. It's, it's, very, it's very well done. Um, yeah. N next, please. Leaning base. Yeah, this is this. Is, so you have a simple you have a simple object instrument, and the person here it, uh, did a good job capturing. It's got good shadow and light. The colors are, are are subdued, which I think adds much powerful. You don't need bright colors to to make something powerful. Now, my only my only reservation is, I, I think the doorway on the right, that light, you know, the lightness. You know, here we go with the border patrol. I try to be careful with going. You know knee-jerk reaction on Border Patrol. But I think that door on the right, the, the lightness kind of distracts. You could have moved it over a little bit to the left and you would have given a little, breath, little more breathing space for that chair. So technically it could have been, you know, I think it would have been a little more powerful if you want to work the left. Um, but it's a beautiful picture. And uh, it, it's, I see, I understand why someone, someone took it. So yeah, very good. Next, please. Storm coming, Avila Beach. This is very well done. Um, there's a tad bit of blowout in the sky. And this is something that when we look at landscapes and seascapes, you know, we tend to be, uh, it's better to kind of underexpose them and then later on selectively bring back, you know, you still, that way you'll have some of the detail, uh, informational data detail in the, in the image and the digital, in the digital information in the image, you can selectively bring back um, uh, light, bring, bring back, well, parts that are not, that are not uh, too light. Um, oh, that was kind of random, wasn't it? You can figure that out, let me know what I just said. But anyways, uh, there's a little bit of blow out in the sky. It actually doesn't bother me though, in this case. You know, I looked at it and said, you know, knee jerk reactions say, oh, well, the sky's a little blown out. That's not really good, but it's actually okay. It actually, this image is not about, uh, it's not an Ansel Adams image of, of uh, um, you know, uh, the, he, was the, he was a great developer, obviously. I think it works really well. Uh, you know, the organic power of the waves against the inorganic pier makes it successful, right? So you have this man-made thing versus versus the ocean, uh, which is uh, you know something that's that's nat it's part of nature. Uh, the three little birds is a nice touch. These little birds right there on the left, I think they're birds on the left-hand side, kind of on the pier, top of the pier. That kind of makes this inter this image so much more interesting to me. It's there's it's so subtle. It's so subtle, but it's it's and the conversion to monochrome was a good choice. It focuses your eyes on the it focuses your eyes on the textural differences between the waves and the piers. So when you take away color, you have texture and luminosity. So in some ways, your it's easier for your eye to kind of compre comprehend that. And color can get in the way of you know color can dominate. I'm not sure what the original color was here, um, but um, that's a long way of saying that this is a nice picture. Very well done. Next, please. Pictorial, intermediate, six images. Springtime in the Sonoma Woodlands. Yeah, the, the contrast between the, between the trees and the flowers works well, as does the diagonal earth line. So when you have this diagonal line, you, <coughs> excuse me, it adds a little bit of tension and interest to story to, uh, to images. Um, some of the flowers look a little washed out. It's probably natural just because the sun is coming through and it's probably a bright day. Um, uh, exposure could probably be taken down a little bit, maybe, and then selectively, selectively brought up. Because um, the white areas kind of attract your attention. They kind of caught my attention. And it's, you know, it probably, the more I think about it, probably it's not that much of an issue. I love to, love to second guess myself. 
Because um, there's something very soothing about this image. I mean, you, you could see this, you could see this image. It's almost got a painterly feel, but it doesn't have a painterly filter applied. So uh, that is very powerful. So good job. Next, please. Outside the city street and life. Yeah, this is excellent. Um, I think this is a risk taking uh, endeavor here. Um, and it's very successful. And when I say risk taking, the idea would be you put this picture in front of a group, you know, um, sometimes you get that kind of 20 80 experience, like 20% think, wow, that's incredible. And the other 80% are kind of like, oh, that's okay. So, um, Yeah, so some, some may not like it, but I think it's great execution. The, ver the verticality makes the image different and compelling. And the people, the people in the old building across the street is a nice touch. So you kind of have to, it's really a framing mechanism what this person's doing here. It's a very interesting frame. It's a stairwell with brick on one side and, and a smooth wall on the other. That's really exceptional. Um, you know, and having the people there, the profiles of the people there and that old building in the background it really, it really makes it's it just there's a powerful, powerful and subtle at the same time. Well, it's subtly powerful, I guess you'd say. So it's, uh, you know, I thought about this. I said you could see this, you could see a picture like this in a modern, in a in a, in a modern gallery. With a, you know, with a price tag on it. It was, a, it was, a, if it was a known artist, they'd probably have a price tag for ten thousand dollars. So, um, someone made this stairwell interesting. <laughs> What can you do? It's 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 great. Next, please. Fires of 2018. Yeah, this is excellent. The image looks surreal and manipulated, but it's not. This is how those fires occurred. Um, and the title is such, it was such a surreal experience during that during that time. Um, the title justifies the image. It informs us that, that this is a natural phenomenon of a disaster. Uh, there there is there is power. It's it's powerful. It's simple, but it's powerful. Uh, and the title is well-defined. It's just totally simple. Um, it brings you into the experience. You know, when I look at these pictures, I usually look at them before I look, read the titles. When I first looked at it, I said, wow, this is kind of interesting filter someone applied on here. Applied on here. And then I saw the title. I said, oh, it's not a filter. It's real. This is how it was. I remember this now. So uh, for all of us, those are a couple of really weird days. I mean, it was almost like you, you, you can imagine it was almost like the end of the world. If that, if that happened, uh, you know, uh, 500 years ago or a thousand years ago, people probably thought it was the end of the world. Maybe it is the end of the world. Obviously, we have these fires that are going crazy in our state. Uh, that's a long way of saying that, that I uh, related to this image. And it's really it's really I could I could I could deconstruct it and talk about that. Talk about this road and the, the payoff with that. Uh, with that opening down there, but I don't have to, I don't have to. It's, you can, you can, see, you can yourself see the power of this image. Very well done. Next please. On the boardwalk, Playland in winter. Yeah, the looking down perspective is really interesting. And it's, it's, uh, it's, and the people are very interesting here. Now with this, and of course you have this curve, which is kind of, kind of a soothing feel that we have these soothing, creates a soothing feel and you have the Ferris wheel on the left, which kind of balances out against the houses. So it's compositionally uh, very well balanced, except there's this open space right in the foreground. So it would be good, it'd be better if something was there, a person, and you can say, oh, well, there was no person. Well, you have the power of time, right? And we have time. Sometimes when we're taking pictures like this, we have to wait for, uh, uh, for, for people to move around or, you know, you definitely wait for separation between people. You don't want people merged together. So, um, and for example, if this woman with the dog was a little bit to the left, um, I think that would be a more balanced photo. Now, it does sound a little silly, but if you think about it, if you're up here, there's no rush to take the picture. And I'm assuming someone did walk down that side of, you know, walk down that, would eventually walk down, down that side of the, uh, of the boardwalk. So I hope that doesn't sound too unreasonable. I know if I was the artist, I'd probably be banging my head on, the, banging my, head on my desk right now, but Anyways, that being said, it's, it's well done. Thank you. Morning jewels. Yeah, this is a great portrait, especially, it's especially effective because it shows your occupation. I like taking pictures of people while they're working. 
I'm just fascinated by it. I don't care what they're doing. Making, making a barista or a guy fixing a door. I just think that it's just fascinating. Um, and you get a feel for what the person, person you know, what the, how the person's making a living is kind of important. And you have a great background here with the, with the details on the wall. The, uh, uh, you got the foreground with this, with this jewelry here. Um, the pose seems to set authentic. Um, uh, and uh, you, know, you, have the, you have the color of the blankets close to the color of the wall. So it's actually got a, it's got a lot going for it. Now, it looks a little oversaturated. Uh, she looks very orange. I don't, she looks more orange than dark. I mean, I know she could be dark from the, from the, uh, from the sun and so forth. But the skin looks a little unnatural to me, which I think distracts from, from, the, from the image. Now, if this was really how this woman looked, maybe that's possible. I don't know. Uh, but it, to me, it looks like the, the saturation was, the orange saturation was pushed up a little bit. And it, it doesn't need it. It didn't need it. Um, okay, next, please. Sailing into the rainbow. Yeah, this is one of the images that I first looked at, and I, I put a little note to myself. Um, come back to this, and give it more, give it, give it another look. I actually gave it probably six or seven more looks, and um, initially I was kind of destruct, deconstructing the image and wondered if, wondered if it was a composite. Does it? I don't know if that matters or not. Probably doesn't matter. Um, um, you know, do rainbows do rainbows end in water? I thought it was usually end of the horizon. So I was kind of deconstructing. I actually looked up information on rainbows, which was interesting. And then I kind of uh, I stepped back a little bit and said, uh, you know, what's this image really about? And uh, it's really about the joy of sailing. And I had done I have sailed small one person crafts like sunfishes in the Ad Adirondack Mountain lakes in in uh, in New York State, it is an amazing experience. <laughs> and once I kind of had that, once I kind of brought, once somehow that image, this image brought out that memory, this is the whole thing about like a work of art is completed by the viewer, right? So if you're a sailor, you've done some sailing, you relate to this a little differently than, than if, you're, if you're not interested in sailing. And uh, uh, suddenly I had a great connection with the image. And it just shows the power of not dismiss, dismissing images when you initially don't understand them, which is, it's like, so I, I schooled myself. It's amazing. So this is very well done. Uh, next, please. Pictorial advanced 12 images. Salt point sandstone. Yeah, this is a great image of, 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 of an uncommon land and seascape. I mean, these rocks are bizarre. And uh, the shutter speed is excellent too. Note how the water is flowing over that rock in the background. So yeah, this is a, it's, it's very well done. Yeah, next please. Sunrise in the Mara. This is excellent. It's very well composed. Uh, the layers in the background make this image successful as, it, as does the solid, this, this solitary bird on top of this tree. If the bird wasn't there, this wouldn't be quite as interesting. Actually, initially, I didn't see, I didn't even notice those, those, those horses in the background, I'm assuming they're horses, not zebras. Maybe they are zebras, I don't know. No, it looks like, well, I don't know. They, don't, they have horses in Africa like that in the wild? I don't know. But actually, I just realized that. I didn't even notice those animals in the background. So yeah, this is, uh, but it's, it's interesting. The, the layers are almost like, it almost looks like this was painted. It's really well done. And this is in the silhouettes. There's something about silhouettes that our eyes like this, the mysteriousness of silhouettes of not seeing details. And of course, silhouettes on trees are really exceptional because you have a pattern there that we find very interesting. Uh, yeah, very well done. Next, please. Boat launch dock at sunset, San Pablo Bay. Yeah, I'm not really sure what the uh, what the primary subject was here, but if it's this this you know the beach foreground has, has, has a lot of has a lot of there's a lot there, so that kind of dominates the image. You know, and I hold if you hold up a, if you hold up a, 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 an envelope to cover part of the foreground and make this elongated, I think it's actually 
a more successful picture because it somewhat accentuates the pier and the horizon. Um, there's a, and the, there's almost a merge between the pier and that horizon too, which is kind of you know a little limiting. Uh, I know that sounds harsh, but that's kind of how it occurred to me. So yeah, next please. Sunset Watcher, Pigeon Point. Yeah, the image is not very sharp. I'm not sure why that is. Um, this is twilight. I mean, without that red head, I wouldn't have known there's a person there. And uh, it's, it's, the saturation is pretty high. And, uh, you know, I, you've heard my comp, you've heard my bias, preference, prejudice, whatever it want to be about, uh, about saturation. Um, I think uh, nature has a lot of muted colors. You don't have to saturate it. Um, so I think that somewhat limits the success because this bright red foreground kind of tracks my eye a little bit. Okay, next please. A mother's love. Yeah, so we have the mother-child story. This is a very powerful story and, and across, across all cultures, right? It's such a powerful story that we all, we all can relate to. Um, the pose is excellent, uh, but I was a little troubled by the texture, the skin texture and the color, especially of the mother. It seems a little bit strange, a little bit off. And I don't know if that's her skin is, I don't think her skin is like this, almost like the structure of it. Someone pushed the structure up a little bit. And what's mostly in, what's mostly seems to be in focus here is the uh, frill of the dress on the baby. Nothing else is really that sharp in focus. Well, the hair may be a little bit, the hair, but it's even soft. And I think in portraits, I think the, the softness in portraits isn't very, I don't find successful. Uh, I mean, you know, it was it was the craze in the 1890s when when there was a you know, the pictorialism movement, not to be confused with pictorial, but the pictorialism movement in the 1890s and early 20th century, which was displaced by realism. You know, Paul Strand and Ziegfeld and those folks kind of displaced all that. Uh, the soft vignette, uh, soft, the soft, the soft focus. So yeah, so it, I think that limits the success of the image. Um, the pose is great, but uh, Execution is a little bit, a little bit um, could be improved. Next, please. Drill sergeant. Yeah, the image is not very sharp. I can't see any detail in these in the in the low plants which dominate the image. I looked at this a couple times to make sure it wasn't just my eyes, but I would expect to see some sharper, you know. Even, you know, even in the for even in the foreground, they're really not very sharp. You can't see a lot of a lot of sharpness in these in these uh, these vineyards. I think they are. Uh, it's well composed. I mean, the, the, it's well balanced. You have a you have a nice tree in the background, which has been there a long time, and these uh, vineyards, which are kind of a new thing. So that, I like that story, and the horizon's nice, and the, you have a cooperative sky, but I just don't see the sharpness of it, which I think is uh, limits the success. Uh, next, please. Light pillar over the Grand Canyon on a cold, windy, and cloudy day. Abundant ice crystals in the atmosphere were, were responsible for this relatively rare atmospheric phenomenon. So, I don't know how you cannot find this interesting. This is this is <laughs> this picture is bizarre. I don't mean that in a positive way. Uh, it's an excellent excellent image of an uncommon phenomenon. And an iconic location. I, I know we often say, "Oh, well, it's another picture of, of El Capitan, or a picture of, of Grand Canyon, and so forth." And we want to see the different the different perspectives. Which I don't know if I always buy into that, but if that's what we're, we're shooting for, wow! <laughs> Look at this. I don't know how many Grand. I've never seen a Grand Canyon picture like this. It looks it looks bizarre. It looks like a, a shot from like a science fiction movie, and. Uh, the title has a lot of value here. Here, without it, I would have been confused by the image. So this is just excellent, just totally excellent. Next, please. Holy macro. Yeah, the focus seems a little soft. 
Um, and there seems like there's a, you know, the, the, uh, the stigma is kind of blown out. Um, not sure, sometimes the yellow, sometimes these yellows blow out because the sensors, um, they, they, top, they top off because uh, they're just, the, the, there's just too much color to them. Shooting flowers can be tough. I've shot a lot of flowers and a lot of, shot a lot of flowers successfully. But I don't really see, this is kind of, I couldn't tell if there was noise in there or if that's just the texture of the plant. Um, but it's not, I mean, it's a beautiful plant. I just, I guess I'm kind of looking, I would like to see a little more detail on the, uh, when you do macro, macro, it's all about details. If you think about, if there was a, if this was a macro of an insect and it was, a, you, know, uh, uh, you know, something you saw on probably like Instagram, you'd see all the detail in the animal, the wings, the eyes, the feet, the antenna and so forth. And I kind of think you, that, that, that was my expectation with this flower. So next please. Ventura Beach Walk. Hey, this really resonated with me. We, this is the kind of picture you would take to your club and you ask people to write down their opinions. Then you talk about it for about 45 minutes. So we have this convention in, that I've heard in camera clubs, backs are not good. Take pictures of people's fronts and their faces. Well, I'm here to say some of my best friends have backs. <laughs> uh, backs are totally fine. They're totally fine. And here, if you actually saw their faces, it would distract, would distract from the, the mood. This is all about mood. And, look, and the separation in the legs and so forth, it, 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 this is just, I was just, uh, um, you, you know, I, I was really impressed by this. It's risk taking. I'm sure this person probably looked at this, this and said, gee, I wonder if the judge is going to say something about it not showing faces. That's what I would do. But they, all, they put it in the competition anyways. So that's, you know, and you, we have to reward risk taking like that. It doesn't always work. In this case, it does work because you got the right judge for it. Uh, <laughs> you're very lucky, you're very lucky today. <laughs> um, uh, but I mean, just, it's tremendous. I mean, this, print this, put it up by your doorway and have people come and, you know, when they see it, because I guarantee you, they'll look at this picture. Very well done. Next, please. Rin, Norway. Yeah, this is very well done. It looks like it's late in the day, which can be challenging for mountains. And, and of course, because uh, you, you, know, you have the contrast. Uh, um, pretty good detail, especially since there's some snow there. And maybe you got, you're kind of locked out because some of the snow looks like it's not real deep. So yeah, it's, uh, um, you know, the, it's a good composition. It's, it's got good detail. And it really brings you into it brings you into that bright kind of twilight light that's, in, that's given a reflection on just on the other side of the ice. And, and these houses are a great ad. It just shows you the majesty of, these, of, these, uh, of this environment. The little houses on the right-hand side. Yeah, this is very well done. Yeah, very good. Next, please. Portrait of an eagle. All right, so this is... This is beautiful. It's tack sharp. It's got great detail. Look at that beak. I've never seen. I've never really seen detail on a beak like that before. It's kind of. It's a little bizarre. It looks like it's kind of got some real, real, weird formation on it, and how it connects to the face. And of course, that's nature's plan. And this is perfectly framed. This person got it just right, where the where the animal is kind of framed by these uh, um, uh, by these twigs. Great. Yeah, it's really, it's really well done. Yeah, uh, next please. Oh, next please, yeah. Yet another iconic image from Yosemite. Right, so, so I, I don't buy into the whole thing like, oh, we've seen these Yosemite images before. That means nothing to me. If you've got a good picture of Yosemite, I'm not sure if that's El Capitan or whether where this is. Probably should. no, it looks like half stone in El Capitan. Yeah, it looks like in some of the, this is actually this is really well done. Very, very well done. Um, there's good detail throughout, which is challenging in this late light. The sky is excellent. 
this tree is very interesting. These, these kind of trees and the kind of on the other side of the stream here. I don't know if this is a branch of the Merced River or not, um, but it's uh, yeah, nothing's tack sharp because it's kind of late in the day, so you're not going to get a tack sharpness. And you've got this mist coming off of the uh, off of the off of the river that uh, you know kind of gives a certain feel. Uh, I think it's just really well done. And note, note, you don't need to saturate this. You know, if, if this person would have saturated this and made it brighter, the green's greener and the, the orange is oranger, it would have ruined it. Nature doesn't need it. Well done. Pictorial Masters. Flora in white. Yeah, I had to come back to this one couple times. I'll let the cat out of the bag. It works. But now I'm contradicting myself because it, we had an earlier picture of, of, of a flower and I said I would prefer to see the detail and not the soft focus. So I, to be consistent, I almost dismissed this or was going to give it the same kind of, same kind of uh, review, uh, but it works for me. I, I didn't, um, I don't, it just works for me. It's it's somewhat soothing. Um, the soft focus works. The white border works. Um, I think the white border works give you know works better than a black border. Um, and and I can't explain why this one works for me and the other one didn't. Maybe the other one seemed like it had a little bit of noise in it. Um, white petals are kind of hard to shoot anyways for detail, but this one looks like it's not noise. It's just soft focus. I'm not sure if it's if that's a filter or not. But uh, there's my inconsistency. Uh, take take $10 off my fee. Uh, very well done. Next, please. Time marched on. Yeah, the treatment works here. So again, I'm kind of, I'm a little suspect of treatments, but this treatment works. Um, the conversion of black and white or monochrome or something, it's almost sepia actually, but it kind of works really well. And um, I was thinking. I was thinking you could you could do a little vignetting. Or, uh, it almost looks like there's some natural vignetting around the house and the trees. And I was thinking, well, maybe maybe you could be a little more vignetting around the exterior, just to kind of bring in a little contrast. And then I kind of thought about. It, I said, why am I saying that? Am I saying that just because I hear other people say that? I mean, actually, what you almost have here is you have kind of have a white vignette, kind of have a neck. What do you want to call it? A white vignetting, you almost have a vignetting that's the opposite of a, of a dark vignetting. And if you actually look at it, it works. So why make something wrong when it works? This is the whole problem that sometimes, sometimes if you, if, if, well, for me, if I, if I deconstruct or I apply these conventions, it actually ruins the experience. This is a beautiful picture. It doesn't, it doesn't need me to be tell, tell it what it should be. It's, it's beautiful the way it is. So whoever did this, you did a great job. Havana, Cuba. This is another image that would be great for like, I don't know if you folks have show and tell nights or not, where you could talk about this. This is, this is, <laughs> this is another, this is another, this is something you would see in a museum. And some people would look at it and probably for 15 minutes, other people would just walk right by it. And uh, the most interesting element in this, in the photo is the man in the window. Uh, his pose and also this building, right? Those are the interesting elements. Um, in fact, if you if you the, the cars look like they're the cars look relatively modern. They're they're anachronistic actually compared to the building and the, and the kind of weird kind of skin tone of the guy. You cover up you cover up the cars. I think it's actually a more interesting picture to me. The cars the cars in the foreground, but they kind of dominate. Right? They're not that interesting. The cars. Um, now, when I first saw this, I looked at the sky and I, I'm thinking like, what is the story? I'm, is this some kind of structure that's been added via filter? Or does this guy really look like that? Uh, the pose is incredible. Uh, and I eventually just got okay with it. I was like, oh, it doesn't have to be, you know, it's pictorial. 
You can do whatever you want. If it was, if it was journalism, I'd say nobody has skin like that. So you added too much structure, but it's pictorial, so you can do what you want. So uh, initially, I was disappointed by it, but it really grew on me once I accepted it and decided not to make it wrong. Except, of course, for the cars. <laughs> okay, next, please. Pretty poison oak in spring. Yeah, this is another image that's all about mood and atmosphere. So something you maybe you'd see like in a, in a bed and breakfast, right? Um, it's very well done. The shallow depth of field is effective because in the background you have, the, you have the plants acting as their own background, which is great. The title is very good. You know, it, it, you got this juxtaposition between beauty and danger, right? It's so beautiful, but boy, don't touch it. Don't touch it and then touch your eye. Yeah, very well done. Next, please. Cylindrical incense hangs from temple ceiling. Yeah, this is one of the ones I looked at. I had to come back to a couple times. And um, I don't have a lot to say about it uh, because I, I think I would fall into just deconstructing it and kind of making it wrong. And I don't think that's that has no value. That's like a that's like a mean movie critic. You know, they're they're they can say mean they can say really really mean things that are that are eloquent, but they're still mean. Um, I understand why someone took this picture. I think I would have taken it myself. This picture, it's very it's it's different, and it's interesting. Um, I I can't I can't go beyond that. And and um, I'm just let I'm, I'm going to let it be what it is, and you folks can just enjoy it as it is too. Next, please. Children from the Himba tribe, Hartman's Valley, Namibia, 2023. Yeah, this is excellent. It's a, you got a great pose and a great composition. Everything kind of works here. The playfulness of the children, the background, the colors. It's another one you could print and put put by your door. If this if this just sits on your digit on your on your drive and you're the only person seeing it, um, um, you're making me sad. Uh, this is a great picture. Look at the smile on that kid's face. Look at the cooperative sky you got there. I mean, the sky is the perfect background. It's not it's not really dramatic. It's just kind of a, but it's a little bit different. And that you don't you don't need a dramatic sky for this. Yeah, just, yeah, I mean, you, you can just enjoy this. You don't need me to deconstruct it. Yeah, very well, very well done. Next, please. Suspension in green and blue. Yeah, so here's one of my biases. I, I find pictures like this amazing. I mean, I think these, I think these wings flap 10 or, 10 or 12 times a second on these hummingbirds. Look at the detail on this bird. Look at the position of the wings. I, I don't know if this person shot off a bunch at one time. It doesn't really matter. It's a beautiful picture. Um, it's such great detail. Uh, it's really one of the best hummingbird pictures I've seen. I mean, this is something you could, you know, if you, if you search hummingbird on the web, this picture should come up. <laughs> you know? so, I could, so I could use it as my screensaver. Um, it's, it's just beautifully done. It's beautifully done. You know, and okay, so we like to talk about the glint in the eye and so forth. That's, I don't, that doesn't mean anything to me. This picture, it's got it. It's great. But if there wasn't a glint in the eye, would it matter? No, it doesn't matter. It happens to have it. That's great. But I would, I wouldn't say, oh, it would be great. It'd be perfect if it had a glint in the eye. That's another convention that we kind of, uh, I don't know. It's kind of a convention of making things wrong, quite frankly, in my opinion. Um, getting a lot of opinions tonight. You're getting your money's worth of my opinions. Um, next, please. Great job. Personal space. This is very well done. When I first looked at it, I'm going to make a confession. I was like, oh, this is a little cliche. This person probably was with someone else and asked them to walk this way. And then I kind of stopped myself and said, what it, what's your problem? 
Can't you just enjoy this image for the beauty that it has? I mean, the colors are so subtle. Look at the beauty in that. And the sky doesn't have to be super blue. It's, be it's beautiful the way it is. The formation of these, of, these, of these sand dunes and the fact this person waited for this person to be just the right position. You've got some pretty good separation in what they're doing. Uh, it's just really, uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's really well done. And the, and the simple title enhances the experience. So think about that. You could easily put a title on this that would have kind of somewhat distracted from the experience. So personal space, it's very, it's, it's very simple. It's very effective. It works well with the image. Um, I mean, if you put like walking in the dunes, I mean, come on, really? That would be, that would be, that would not be, um, that would not be good. No, it'd be okay, but it would not be as powerful what we have here. So yeah, good job. Very good job. Upward. Yeah, the perspective is very good, and this dark, this dark kind of foreboding uh, atmosphere is effective. This is not an inviting build, building. I mean, this is this is kind of where the wicked witch of the of the West would live if she if she was alive today. Um, and I think that's the power of the image, right? It's it, it's totally it's totally inorganic. Um, our eye likes these repetitions. Um, is it too repetitive? No, it's, it is what it is. Um, although I did notice that if you look about three or four floors up, there's one window without the curtain drawn on the right-hand side, which that was my, that was my uh, look for, that was my, my brain wanted to see something different. So my, my, I keep on being drawn to that one window. So um, yeah, this is, this is very effective. I think the treatment's effective. It's got an ominous atmosphere. Um, yeah, it's very well done. Next, please. Along the back roads. Uh, this is just, this is excellent. So it's a simple treatment. Um, the treatment works because the underlying image is, is wonderful. If the underlying image wasn't wasn't as wasn't as wasn't successful, the treatment it's it's hard to take an image that's not very interesting and then put a treatment on it and make it look make it look interesting. That's my opinion. That's what it works for me when I do those treatments on my images. It's like oh, the image still is not interesting. But this image under underlying image is very interesting. You have these trees. The person did a good job of, of framing the framing the house with the trees, and then the colors are really really subtle and beautiful. Um, This is very well done, yeah. I mean, again, this is something else that could be printed and put somewhere in the house. Next, please. Laguna First Light. Yeah, this is, this is a, this is well done. It's kind of a different kind of landscape, landscape picture. I don't know if it's after a flood or something, or if, you know, some kind of it looks like some kind of steam coming off the water in the in the in the kind of in the in the in the, uh, the, the back a little bit. Um, but yeah, but it's 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 well done. Yeah, it's very good. Next, please. Wave horses. Uh, this is another one I had to come back to. Because uh, the title made me, the title made me look for horses. I wasn't sure if that was a poetic reference or allusion to the power of the waves. It kind of was a little confusing. Um, and then I decided just to kind of look at the image and um, just kind of just kind of accept it. And uh, it's actually very nice. It's very well done. Um, Yeah, it's it, it kind of you know it reminded me of that that Japanese artist who does those pictures. He did those, I think they were wood cuttings actually, wood cuttings in um, maybe they were prints of waves in Japan. <coughs> reminded me of that. Yeah, this is very well done. 
I was confused by the title. Maybe I'm missing something there, but well done. An abandoned ranch in a land of unrelenting weather. Yeah, the gate is actually interesting here, uh, but our entry into the image is somewhat blocked by that fence in the bit, that tall fence in the midground. You know, you have this leading line. It leads you to this fence that's kind of right, kind of stops you. I mean, you, you have to stop, but then you can go off to the left where the house is. I, I think the house may be more, be more interesting payoff than this, than, this, than this fence. Although the fence is very interesting. I just think that the, uh, you know, that, that mid-ground fence is a little bit, um, it, doesn't, it doesn't draw me into the picture. It just stops me right there. And that may be my own personal experience, but um, and maybe now that I've said that, you, you'll have that experience too. Maybe you wouldn't if, I, if you hadn't heard me comment on it, but um, that's kind of this one landed to me. It's actually, um, I mean, the, the sky is very interesting and, and the, the fence is very interesting. Yeah, but uh, the, the, uh, geometric, the, geomet the uh, geometrics of that fence in the, in the midground is somewhat blocking my entry. Yeah, next please. Critique feedback, 10 images. Passing storm. Yeah, the colors are very interesting here. Um, it's a bit surreal. And I'm not sure if someone played with the with the colors, uh, but it's such a subtle play that it's very effective. It it kind of sense of it's that's kind of it's got a it's got a kind of a weird pleasant mood, but also a little bit got a little bit of tension to it. I think it's and I think this image is about just the mood, right? So what what do you what do you experience when you see this? I mean, those clouds are pretty amazing. Um, and of course, the trees are, are, are interesting too. Um, this reminds me when I was a kid, I used to go duck hunting. We'd walk through places like this and then make a wrong step and get all wet. Mm. <laughs> it's, it's, so I can relate to it. That's, that's my story there. It's very, very well done. Next, please. Ice Carver. All right. So you, you heard my prejudice bias preference around people working. I like taking pictures. I like taking pictures of people working. I just find it fascinating. I think that's the ultimate portrait of someone. You're not, you don't just get them in the studio, but you get them when they're doing something, preferably at, preferably in their environment. And I have not seen, I don't think I've seen a lot of ice sculpture workers. This might be my first. And this is really successful. Um, the composition is well done. The framing is excellent. Look at the boots this guy's wearing. I mean, this is this this person is. Um, I mean, it's just really. And then this background, an easy easy grad, easy what that say, easy easy grad. So he's repurposed something for his background. This is his workshop. Uh, um, it really is. A, it really is. A, a, a really, I I just found it fascinating. So this is, it's excellent. It's really excellent. Next, please. Little Dragon Slayer. So it seems like kind of makes a selective abstraction. That's kind of stating the obvious, right? Um, I had to come back to this because initially I was, I was kind of resisting it. I was kind of like, okay, well, someone someone did some painterly stuff here, but it's kind of it's kind of interesting because it's selective painting. You can still get, still see that kid's face, right? And if that was all blurred out, then it wouldn't be successful, but it's successful because you can see the kid's face. It's really about this kid, right? And maybe, maybe that, of course, that other dragon too, but it's really, it's really about this kid. And uh, it's probably a great experience for this kid to actually be part of this troupe and do this every year, every, well, they do, they do it all, actually they do it quite a bit. Um, they do it in store openings and they do it at holidays and so forth. So, and they practice a lot, these people. Um, these troops. Yeah, so this is, this is successful. 
but initially I resisted it and then I kind of realized um, I didn't have to. Very well done. Walking alone with the sunset as a companion. Uh, yeah, this is a minimalistic photo, right? So you have all this kind of empty space, space, and then of course you have the person. So you, what you really have is kind of showing the power of nature, sometimes the power of humanity over 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 the individual, and uh, it's really well composed. I mean, it's got so much going for it. I could I could. I could deconstruct it, but I don't think you think folks need me to, to, to do that. I think you can just enjoy it without my comments. Um, as hard as it is to resist that, although I will. And, and look at the arms, look at the arm separation. That's that kind of makes it. Yeah. Yeah, it's very well done. This this also could be printed and put somewhere. Buffalo. Yeah, when I first saw this, I wasn't really sure if it was if it was very sharp. That was my kind of that was kind of my concern about this image. It's a beautiful pose and it's a beautiful animal. And it's a beautiful perspective on that animal. And I never noticed, I never really realized, okay, the ears have to be low if you have horns. I never really realized that. Um, but I'm just it's it doesn't seem very tack sharp. And I'm hoping I'm hoping that's not just my eyes. Um So anyways, yeah, I think I think it could be sharper, but it's a beautiful composition. Yeah, next please. Good morning. Time for breakfast in uh, Olgi, Western Mongolia. So uh, I, didn't, I want you folks just to enjoy this without my voice for a little bit. Uh, this is really well done. The sun's behind the kids' ears. Look at the ears. You know? uh, you've got really great shadow play. It's an authentic image. Um, that doorknob is a really nice little ad, right? Look at that doorknob. Um, yeah, this is a, a, a. This is very well done. Yeah, this is this is this is a great portrait, right? I mean, you have this kid and kid in his environment right and it's kind of it, it could be it wouldn't have to be in, in, in uh, i think it's mongolia right yeah it would have to be going could be could be a kid anywhere of course the fact that it's mongolia is kind of more level interesting to us because that's you know a different culture but um it's kind of a universal theme young kid um a lot of kids got a lot to look forward to in his life yeah really well done next please Manzanar, one of four, a 2019 volunteer work party clears land at Manzanar's children's village site. They will clear the land, survey, dig up plots, and document whatever they find as they go. Two of four, a volunteer picks up branches left from trees that had grown into areas that had been barracks, housing, children, and staff. A restored pear orchard can be seen in the background. Three of four, bark jumps up as a volunteer dumps a load of bark into the wheelbarrow. Four of four, the restoration of Children's Village was finished in 2022. The cement blocks show the boundaries of the barracks. Also restored are a gazebo and a swing set. Yeah, this is excellent. Um... The conversion to black and white was a good was a, I think a good choice here. Um, it's interesting. It's people cleaning up this um, man's. I, I was there about twenty years ago, and there was very little there except for the cemetery and some old some old uh, old fish ponds that were abandoned and so forth like that. It's pretty amazing. Now they're kind of they're reconstructing some of the stuff, which is great. It's such a good series of photos of a place which, with, with quite frankly, a very sad history. Um, and uh, if you haven't been there, I definitely recommend going there. It's uh, and, th and this uh, um, this series of photos is really well done. And uh, yeah, it's a uh, good job.
wait for the moment. <clears throat> yeah, the texture on these rocks is very interesting which kind of makes them the, I think that, is, I think that they, they, they occur to me as the primary suspect, the primary suspect, primary uh, uh, subject. Um, and it, it's, it almost seems like it kind of blocks the view a little bit of, you can't really get into the, you can't really, I can't really get beyond those rocks. And, uh, you know, that's, this is a, you know, I'm not the, I'm not the person with the camera here. I'm just someone who's looking at it. So someone took this picture and it meant a lot to them. And I understand, I, I understand why, although I, I kind of feel a little bit from a compositional perspective, a little bit blocked entering it. That doesn't mean anything. It's just, it's just my, you know, <clears throat> if you believe in your photos and print it and put it on your wall. <clears throat> it's actually, well, ex the execution's, ex excuse me, the execution's great. <clears throat> You know that the softness of the of the water and so forth and the waves. Um, yeah, next please. Scooping up the fishes. <clears throat> yeah, this is very well done. This pelican here is uh, not sure if that's a western pelican, but uh, uh, they do they they scoop up these fishes when they're they're. When they're their mouths, or they, whatever you call those, those, those pouches, and they swallow. Um, the elongation here works really well. Really, really works very, very good. Uh, and I'm sure this person probably played with different perspectives. This, this one definitely works. Um, maybe the other ones work too, but this one definitely works. Um, you know, kind of the, the long bill is kind of is kind of juxtaposition with the long uh, perspective. I think that's what makes it successful to me. Yeah, very well done. Good job. Next, please. Hey, I'm landing here. Yeah, yeah. There's very good separation of the birds, but the images are not very sharp. And I always think that wildlife pictures are more enjoyable when they're sharp. And again, I looked at this over and over again, and uh, I don't know if it was just too far away for the lens to capture it, or if it's I don't think it's a speed thing because the one that's standing there looks like it's standing there. That isn't that isn't actually very sharp either. Sometimes you lose sharpness, obviously, when a bird's coming in like that to land because it's in mo it's in motion. But the one that's on the left also doesn't look very sharp. Um, it's it's beautiful. It's a beautiful uh, display of these wings. I haven't seen wings. I never I never knew their wings were that that long. Actually, like the wings are like three times as long as the body. Um, it's beautiful the way that it's separate. You got the separation there, and you got the right, the right pose. It's just to be nicer for a little bit sharper. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> okay, take another five minute break, and then Steve will come back with the winners. Your immediate three images. Yep. Yes. <laughs> okay. Now, if I can get back to my other screen. And in third place, creative, third place, Ellen. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Jennifer will, will uh, relate to this because in India, we have these models. And she was actually perched on a wall about four or five feet off the ground. But I had to move her up here. And I think would would add to this if I had a photographer in the bottom aimed up at her. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was just what I was trying to convey. Congratulations. Thank you. Second place. Sherry. So cute. Oh, thank you. I took this picture of my grandson and his face, you know, is kind of forlorn looking and it it reminded me of that painting. And so I looked for a an appropriate background or look for a long time and finally settled on this and um, it's actually the neighborhood my mom grew up in we took her for her 80th birthday on a driving tour of all the houses she lived in and and this was her old neighborhood 
Nice idea. Thank you. Congratulations. First place, Greg. Very mm. nice. Very cool. Yeah. <laughs> I like the color in the eye. Yeah, I love the reflection in the eye. Mm -hmm. yeah. I want to know about that title. Rehab. What's the connection to rehab? Mm -hmm. It's a bird saint rescue place. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that that raven is blind. Oh, rehab for the bird. Okay. Oh, right. Not the person mm. in the back. Beautiful Great. image. Neat. Congratulations to Greg. Creative Advanced, three images, third place, Laura. Thank you. Yeah, I've just got to shove my critters in someplace. So I uh, I have the railroad tracks and the, that's the tunnel out at Point Race, the tree tunnel. So. Oh, God. Thank you. That's wonderful. Yeah, really cool. Great color, too. A lot of fun. Congratulations. Second place. Trisha. Mm. Thank you. Um, I have a fasc fascination with two things, the mannequins that look real and the net in Petaluma, the golf net in Petaluma. So, <laughs> this is a comedy of <laughs> two. Thank you. Glad you Trisha, I, I didn't have to think twice about who made this image. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I recognize the I net. Know. That's a cool um, shot. Glad you're making good use of that net. It's really <laughs> yeah, it's pretty neat. I like it. Congratulations. First yep. place, Linda. Oh, oh, very nice. Oh, why thank you. That's uh, uh a, that's a stream in winter, and they're all the trees that are reflecting into the water. Mm. Yeah. I I don't know how to title things. <laughs> cool thank image. you. Thank you. That was that was fun. It's cool. Nicely done. Congratulations. Creative Masters, three images, third place. Liz. All right. This was in camera, <clears throat> Western Hills Nursery. And I guess I could change it a little, but I, I was looking at entering it a bunch of times and I finally said, put it in. Cool. Very cool. Really pretty, pretty image. Great color. Yeah. Congratulations. Second place, Mike. Mm, it looked like a Mike shot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Appropriate title for San Francisco. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations to Mike. First place, Bill. <laughs> Thank you. So this is a second version that I've entered in the competition. And the main addition is my wife in the background. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh. awesome. She made the picture. Yeah. 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 Did you tell her what to look like? Oh, well, she's seen it. <laughs> Congratulations. Journalism. Intermediate three images. Third place, Sherry. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it it. These people amaze me. I mean, they just amaze me. Running fifty k. What's that? Thirty five miles or thirty one miles or something like that. And um, the finisher is my daughter in law, who's a total badass. And that's her son. He ran out to meet her, and uh, he was out. He ran out maybe a hundred yards. He could he could keep up with her. <laughs> but yeah, so thank you so much. I appreciate the feedback. See, that would have been great to put in the title. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> right, because that's a great story. That's a real good human interest story. Yeah. 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 But thank you. Congratulations. Second place, Ellen. Mm -hmm. yeah well thank you <laughs> I, mean, I loved being in india but the reality is it looks like jennifer it was jennifer was that jennifer in the trash yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> Way to go, oh. Jennifer. <laughs> Congratulations. A lot of info in there. First place. So Mark. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so this is Spring Lake in Sonoma County, and I, I walked there a lot, and it was the last two pictures that prompted me to um, do a little more study because I just saw them all as turtles. And once I started watching, I did notice the dominance um, of the uh, red-eared sliders wherever you go, and then did some research, and there, there are studies from Sonoma State where the western pond turtle is in decline they have to re reintroduce them in certain places and wow. so there's a lot more going on than i realized uh, with the turtles out there Thank you. congratulations thank you journalism advanced four images honorable mention phil mm -hmm. Uh, I think it's explanatory. This was great. <laughs> it's a great expression. <laughs> I, I do agree. The uh, title could have probably been a little more descriptive. But <laughs> with the, the people photos. Congratulations. Well, Third place. Bubbles. Linda. Oh. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, the, they are really fun to watch do their thing. Where is that taken? It's at um, Matanzas Creek Winery. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah they're really yeah, good at what they do. Cool. Good nice story. Thank you. Great story, yeah. yeah. Great call. Congratulations. Third place, I mean, second place. Laura. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, I was uh, I was actually in search and rescue in the 90s for 10 years. And uh, back then it was paper maps and map and compass. And it was it was all manual. So I went out to a on training hike around with the team a few weeks ago. And it was really interesting to see how technologies played a part. Yeah, wonderful. Good job. Yeah, it seems like yeah. a great thing to do. Unique story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Congratulations. First place, Pat. Yes. <laughs> oh, that is one big squash. Yeah. That's sweet. Fun mm. images. I've never seen this before. This is cool. Did the wheels spin? <laughs> I think we slide. <laughs> slide a little bit. Congratulations to Pat. Journalism Masters, two images, second place. Jack. Mm. <laughs> we knew it. Is that, is that his? It is black and white horse. Great story. Yeah. Wow. The blue against the snow. It's beautiful. And that, look at that, man. That's cool. Is that his vineyard? His nice backyard. Very He's beautiful. in Thailand right now. Oh. Congratulations to Jack. Yeah, let's see that. First place. Anne. Yay! Hey, nice, oh. Anne. Oh, thank you. Good Wonderful. job. Nice job. The damage here is just striking. And if, I mean, it's just a very visual representation of how and our climate is changing and how our sea levels rising. And um, I have seen this house over a couple of years that I've gone down there. I saw them raising this house and putting uh, the foundation on it while we were walking down the path. And when we came back, the house was on the foundation wow. and, working and working on it. And it is right on the precipice wow. of this path that has all these cave-ins. So I, and they're still working on it. <laughs> I just, I was blown away. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Wow. Surprised I can get insurance. Oh, <laughs> I don't know if you can get insurance. I, I don't give them any insurance. <laughs> oh, boy. Anyway, what thank you very much. 
This is Santa Cruz right in town on West Cliff. Yeah. Uh, this bike and walking uh, path in addition to a road that goes all <clears throat> along all the houses that face out onto the Pacific, so. Congratulations. Yeah, really mm, great. Beautiful, nice. Mm. Beautiful. Pictorial basic, three images. Honorable mention, Stephanie. Can I see this? Really pretty. I like all the textures. Mm -hmm. Congratulations to Stephanie. Second place, our other Stephanie. Are you here tonight? I am. Thank you. <laughs> Very nice. Great. RGB all represented. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank First you. place. Again. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's really <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And I, yeah, I love Marcella too. I actually got a picture of her when she was only four months old oh. and came back and yeah, now she's a little adult. Um, I wanted to mention to the judge that I couldn't think of a better title because she was, this portrait was taken in the wild and um, they, in the area where I photographed her, they name, they give the Jaguars a name as part of the Jaguar ID project and her name is Marcella. And um, yeah, she had that. She was something caught her attention. So yeah, it's beautiful. beautiful. Very, yeah. really yeah. Very beautiful. nice. Yeah. Yeah. Thank nice. you. It's handling of the light. Yeah, really nice. Thank you. Congratulations. Can I say one thing here? So yes, there was a. Did I miss the third place? The third place. It was a third place yes. image. No. Did I miss it? No, it was a storm. there were three. There were the, three the, Stephanies. The yeah, no, the, the leaning base was it was honorable mention. The storm coming uh, to Aviel Beach. That's missing. That was actually third. Oh. Okay, well, Bill, you and I, we both have tripped over something this evening. I hope I didn't put it in wrong, but. Um, it's it's in it's in my document, so you can check it against the document I sent it to you. Right. Um, I have that on a different monitor. Um, I will finish with the awards. You can discuss at the end. I will go back and call up that image and then show it. So don't leave after we get to the end. <laughs> and if I filled okay. out the form incorrectly, I apologize for that. So, oh, thank you for pointing that out. And congratulations to Stephanie for two winning images. Yeah. yeah. Really nice. Thank you. Pictorial Intermediate, three images, third place. Mark. Mm. Mm. Uh, that was Calusa County um, during all the fires that were going on. Oh. Oh. Cool. Congratulations, Mark. Interesting color. Yeah. There's no bees in there, though. <laughs> <laughs> They're all dead. No blooms yeah. either. Congratulations. Thank you. Second place, Amy. Oh, cool. Amy, I love this image. Yeah. Oh, it is. It's just outstanding. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Is that Boston? Uh, it's New York. It was York. In, uh, a photography museum. I got inspired. It was on a rainy mm. day and coming down the steps and pulled out my iPhone and saw this. I was like, this nice. is it. This is the shot. So, yeah, <laughs> it's really beautiful. Yeah, I really love it. I love the sparse yeah. color. Yeah, the interior in black and white and the exterior. Yeah, it really must be great. the 20%. But <laughs> what did you say? 
that we must be the 20% that love it. Yes, I got, I got left out with that. I'll be, I'll be taking my $10,000 fee for that. <laughs> Congratulations. So cool. Yeah. Good job. First place, Ellen. Oh, great. Well, thank you. Well, I, I look back in Lightroom and whatever I'd done, and I did not saturate this at all. It's <laughs> so, and, so why does it say first place, second place? Yeah, why does it say that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, the, the stone there is this yellowish and, and the, the colors that people wear are so bright and her skin was, that, that was her. Yeah, that's, and actually, that's the reason why I gave it first place because I wasn't sure. Um, I am a, I'm also happen to be a soccer ref and we're trained that if you're not 100% sure, don't make the call. <laughs> so even though I kind of thought it looked a little natural, um, um, I wasn't sure. So I don't think, I didn't want to basically penalize you for my own, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, inability to, to recognize what it is. It sounds like it was authentic. So I'm glad that that was, that you got first place. There's a real chance that there's a bug in the ICM software, uh, the first place, second place, and then the missing other one, because um, two of my screens in the application are inverted. So it's like there are several little glitches here. So it'll be interesting to find out uh, afterwards what's going on. Anyways. You have your hands full again, Steve. Yep, thank you. Yep. Never ending. Yeah. Pictorial advanced, five images, honorable mention. Ed. So cool. Yeah, very nice. Really nice. Uh, One of my favorite parts of this of the uh coast. Same here. Mm, yeah, I love that. That's coast. gorgeous. Yeah. Great color and texture. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Thank you. Honorable mention. Phil. <laughs> oh. mm. Well, I like it. Members and uh, I have plenty of others showing their faces, but I, I felt the mood was uh, greatly enhanced uh, by not showing their faces. Yeah. Yep. Good shot. Great Great shadows too. Yeah. I was just noticing the shadows. I didn't notice them before, but the big one, the the long one at the yeah. person. Yeah. Really, really very determined. determined. <laughs> Direction. Yeah. What it is. Congratulations. Third place, Cindy. Oh, thank you. I took this in uh, the Masai Mara last month. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, beautiful. What kind of bird? I like the little bird. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I have no clue. It was too dark to tell what the birds were. <laughs> Are they horses or zebra? Zebra. No, there's zebras. You don't find horses in Africa. Or, <laughs> you know. I love the color. Yeah. yeah. And the layers of color. Layer, layers of creation. Yeah, really pretty. Tones. Very, very nice. Yeah. Congratulations. Second place, Laura. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you. I, yeah, I was a little reluctant that it was another bird in a tree, but. Um, the framing was a little bit different, so I thought I'd, I'd give it a shot. And I don't know if that's a crack on the beak or if that's the way they are, but I noticed it's got that little line across the beak, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. It's beautiful. Nice it's image. Like, nice shoulder. Like the orange eyebrows. Yeah, I, and I didn't yeah. really notice those before until this photo that's got that little, little piece. <laughs> Congratulations. First place. Jennifer. Oh, oh my goodness. So oh. stunning. Light so blood. stunning. Oh. Jennifer, isn't that your second light pillar thing? That's my yeah. second light That's pillar. I thought you've gotten two of them. You got one last time. <laughs> Twice in a lifetime. I can't believe it. I know. Yeah, really it's only the second time I've ever seen this. Yeah. Yeah, this 
we were photographing for probably an hour before the sunset and it was cold and windy and everybody was really ready to leave. And all of a sudden this happened and it's like, wow. Everyone screamed. It was just so <laughs> stunning. It was just amazing. Uh, and it only lasted really you know, probably a minute. And it was it was just um, a really brief thing because it was so cloudy uh, that, that that had been obscuring things for a while. But it was really exciting. It um, looks extraterrestrial. It, yeah. it does. It's just amazing. So glad yeah. you were there. Another, another image like like this it's a different one you could make a uh, creative out of this and it'd be unbelievable <laughs> like uh, me, it's so unbelievable. Like, i couldn't i don't think i could do anything to make it <laughs> yeah it looks like a bomb going off with the like a spaceship cloud. at the top i think would be good <laughs> that would do it yeah, <laughs> yeah. with that in the sky and the snow below and it was just yeah. just an such an experience you can bury me after this, I think. I think it doesn't get any better. <laughs> Almost looks like a rocket taking off. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yep, it does. Cape Canaveral almost. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah. Very thank, cool. thank you very much. I, I appreciate Congratulations. it. Congratulations. Pictorial Masters, three images, third place. Liz. Oh, oh beautiful, Liz. Hey, Liz. Beautiful. Spring hike at Healdsburg mm -hmm. Open Space. Mm -hmm. Place to go. Makes me itch just nice. looking at it. <laughs> we didn't get close. <laughs> <laughs> the telephoto. Good idea. Thank you. Nailed the depth of field on that looks, one. It looks so pretty for something to be so nasty. Yeah. Um, Thanks a lot. Yeah. Nice color. Congratulations. Second place, Tamara. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. So That's so cool. Great. Cute image. Those two hands sticking out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that does it. Yeah. So cool. And the little toes. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations to Tamara. First oh, place. Fascinating, too. Herb. Mm -hmm. Herb. That's that's amazing. It is. Wow. Amazing. Had to go in uh, thank you. That's great. Uh, after just this happened, I guess, a week or so ago, uh, before a trip to the Galapagos, we went to the cloud forest where there are a lot of hummingbirds. And oh. I guess uh, if you take enough pictures, you, you finally get one where he's standing <laughs> in the right spot and uh, <laughs> looks like he's not moving. So uh, thank you very much. Beautiful. Wow. Nice. They say you have to have about 1,600 to the second or above to stop the wing. So you got 2,000 oh. is, is plenty fast enough. So that's great. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah. They didn't know that. That's great. Yeah, I love the background, too. Yeah, I got a nice oh, shot yeah. on that one. Yeah. Yep. I struggled. I couldn't get a good one when I was down there in October. Yeah, it's a great shot. It's, there's a lot that are near misses. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, one more thing is that, so I did give an honorable mention to that image of the man walking on the, or the person walking on the sand. Did that? that get oh, yeah, the Ventura Beach Walk. That was honorable mention. No, no, the, the one where the person was faced, the one with the- uh, Oh, sand dunes? Dune? Yeah, was that displayed? It should have been displayed in this category. Was it? Was yeah, it? an honorable mention. Oh, well, it wasn't on the, the uh, spreadsheet you sent us. Okay. Uh, my mistake then. I'm looking at the spreadsheet now. I'll notate that. So we should we should correct that then, Steve. Yeah. Well, um, I'll send out something. Uh, That's um, good. After we mentioned. put and it all through, out of a dozen images. Maybe That's the thing to do is perfect. is uh, send send the spreadsheet, send a new spreadsheet, Mark, and then we can enter that as the official results yeah i have them all marked in, i have them all marked in my document and then i i transferred that to the to the to i'm the, surprised that was first i would have put, reversed them because that's basically just i know but it, but it really isn't anything great shapes the other one is a lot more uh, of a challenge artistically and uh, aesthetically this is just a what? 
Congratulations, sir. Herb's critiquing his own image. Yeah. <laughs> he liked the sand dune one, and, and Lori got dissed. <laughs> and I'm going to stop the share because I didn't. I thought I'd selected the best of show, but I didn't. So I will be right back. All right. Nice job, Herb. Way to go, Herb. Well, uh, wow, well, this was uh, this is a surprise. Congratulations. <laughs> you, uh, Pleasant surprise. I always do you very rich, much. Photographer. It's a beautiful. I, I think I would have went to the Grand Canyon lighting uh, spectacle, but uh, okay. thank you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah. Good at all. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. <laughs>